Hey guys, welcome back to another Honkai Star All video, and for today I want to make a guide on the top 10 best characters in the game right now that everyone should aim to have in their account. With the game having more endgame content than ever before, and the need for lots of different units and teams to complete all of them, I was requested a number of times to make a video covering this, so I figured now is as good a time as any. Something we should quickly establish before doing so, Honkai Star All advances in power scaling much, much faster than what many of us are used to in Genshin. It's not Fire Emblem Heroes or Final Fantasy Brave Exeus in terms of power creep, but most characters in version 2 far eclipse version 1 by a definitive margin. In light of this, there's a fairly decent chance of things changing within the span of a mere 2 or 3 versions, which is why the HSR community is super crazy about keeping up with leaks. That being said, the 10 I choose for this video should be more than good for a long while to come, so don't feel too bad about investing in them. Now, I am contractually barred from openly discussing any leaks, but for the sake of posterity, if you're watching after 2.5, feel free to check the pinned comment for my thoughts on Faisal and Ningsha because I have a lot to say for both of them. Lastly, you should go without saying that just because I don't mention a character on this list doesn't mean they're not good. Sarl has a ton of fantastic units, but I can only mention 10. In any case though, we're gonna go through 3 honorable mentions before talking about the actual 10. And regarding the actual 10, this list is not ordered, it's not a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, just a pool of characters. So without further ado, let's begin. First honorable mention will be Himeko. Of all the standard banner units, Himeko definitely aged the most gracefully courtesy of Pure Fiction and the rise of break teams, with her kit mostly revolving around AoE damage in a way that can be easily accessed via her ultimate in town, she is a consistent attacker capable of wiping out clusters of enemies in record time. What makes it so appealing is that right now, assuming you do have the party members for it, she can be a viable candidate in all three game modes, which is greatly valued in light of coverage being the most important factor for Star Wars Endgame. Being able to comfortably fit into either break or follow-up attack teams gives her a ton of future sustainability too, since those two engines are currently receiving the most development. She is not someone you should go out of your way for, but you're bound to obtain her eventually, either by off-banner pulse or through the standard 5-star selector you obtain after 300 standard pulse. In either case, definitely start working on her if you have her. She'll be very handy for your endgame experience. Second honorable mention will be Gallagher. This might be a hot take, as Gallagher may very well be the best 4-star in the game right now, also excelling at all 3 game modes by virtue of being a sustain unit who can also dish out fantastic break damage. However, the reasons I put him as honorable mention and not top 10 are twofold. One, being a 4-star, there's a high chance he'll get power corrupt whenever a 5-star character comes out with the same niche as him. Again, I'm not allowed to cover specifics, but Lingsha is a fire abundance unit, make it that what you will. Two, the real reason Gallagher is so strong right now is because he's arguably the best companion unit for someone else on the list who's the real engine behind the whole operation. All the same, Gallagher is an outstanding 4-star character and more than deserves to be mentioned. If you have him, definitely build him. Anytime break damage is involved, he's your go-to healer. Although you'd be hard-pressed to call him a healer when sometimes he does the same DPS as your actual DPS units. Last honorable mention is Fushuan. Fushuan's a top tier tank by every stretch of the definition and routinely sees a lot of use. She can be a literal human shield for your team, protect them from crowd control, and even give a boost in DPS on the side. But I feel like other sustain units can do just a bit more than her and are just a bit more valuable, like a tiny bit. Fushuan for me would be like number 11 or something, very much deserving to be with everyone else otherwise. She's still the only covered tank in the game right now and is also the only tank who can heal herself, making her very self-sufficient. To repeat, honorable mentions are basically honorary top 10 members. I recommend you go after Himeko, Gallagher, and Fushuan just as much as I recommend the top 10. So I guess in actuality this is more of a top 13, but semantics. Alright, moving on to the top 10 units, and again this is not ordered. First character will be Ran Mei, who very well might be the best character in the game right now if I had to choose one. She was already in contention for the best support in Star Wars when she came out, but with the emergence of break teams, she's decidedly become the best support in the game and possibly the most valuable in the game too. There's no other way to describe her. Ran Mei does everything. For one, she's one of the few supports in the game who can buff 2 or 3 damage dealers at the same time, offering them a spread of damage, speed, break effect, and break efficiency by simply being present in battle. She can then further increase her team's pressure by boosting their alt type rest penetration, and if you decide to invest in her idolance, she can also make her entire party do partial true damage inside her ultimate and give 40% attack when party members attack weakness broken targets. Ran Mei is essentially a walking ball of stats for the party. Further underscoring her value is her break utility. Since break teams are one of the best performing engines at the moment, being the only character who can supply increased break efficiency to her team makes her an invaluable asset. She's the most brain dead support in the game with permanent uptime on her main buffs and great coverage. She was overpowered beyond belief when she came out on 1.6 and only got better over time as we got more double carry team comps and break related teams. I sure hope everyone pulled for her during her rerun because you'll be using her quite a bit. She is also, you know, best waifu, but that's besides the point. 
Next character will be Aventurine. If your main concern is to not take any damage at all, this guy couldn't be better in that department. Aventurine's main draw is not only how strong his defenses are, but how consistently he can maintain them, which is a major weakness of Japart. Thanks to his A4 and A6, you can acquire shields for the entire party without ever having to activate your skill. But if in the event you feel like you're about to withstand heavy fire, you can always use the aforementioned skill. Being SP positive is a huge plus for a tank, as it means you can allocate all resources to your supports and attackers. But the funny thing is, Aventurine can also do pretty serious damage with his ultimate and talent. Not only do they scale off his defense, giving you bulk durability and DPS, but you actually have somewhat of an incentive to build out tank hack damage on him. In fact, that's the current strategy. Aventurine gets bonus crit from his A2, and thanks to his talent activating based on follow-up attacks or shielded allies taking damage, he can strike very frequently when paired with other follow-up attackers like Topaz, Ratio, and March 8. Best of all, he comes with a fair bit of utility in both offense and defense. His ultimate can increase crit damage against your target of choice, and with his E1 and E2, he can boost your party's DPS even further. Though he doesn't have an actual cleanse, while shielding allies, he gives everyone 50% bonus effect rest, making them less likely to get crowd controlled, although it's not quite as foolproof as Fushun's barrier. Overall, Aventuring covers everything. He makes your team indestructible, he can contribute a fair bit of damage on his own, and he makes everyone stronger, another brain-dead character who sort of wins by existing. Moving on, let's talk about a damage dealer, Akron. Having just made a why everyone plays on her, Prevailing Wisdom is fully aware of why she's on this list. I suppose continuing the notion of doing everything, Akron literally does everything. She has immense, and I emphasize immense, attack strength thanks to the sheer quantity and quality of self buffs in her kit, which can multiply her strength tenfold in the right circumstances. She can do just as much damage against one enemy as she does five. And despite her ultimate having an alternate activation requirement, said requirement is fairly consistent and straightforward, making it sometimes easier to access than traditional energy-based ultimates. She was already overpowered, even with the somewhat limited options we had for her, but now that Jelchol is out, Akron got even stronger. That might be the best thing about Akron at the current moment. Anyone whose skill revolves around debuffing indirectly benefits her, giving her excellent future-proof value. If you're looking for someone who can one-shot MOC in APOC Shadow, look no further than her. She can deal catastrophic damage whether or not the enemies are vulnerable to lightning, and she only gets even stronger with vertical investment. Acquiring her Light Cone and her second Eidolon gives her even more uptime, with more support options and more consistency. She literally has no drawbacks. What's interesting is, despite not being a follow-up attacker or having any turn advancements in her kit, Akron's surprisingly good in pure fiction. Not like her to an Himiko level, but high enough to where you'll find most people spamming her anyway. It also helps that she can pair up with the other lovely Nihility mommies, allowing for alternate party options. I still find it insane that they gave her this much power. Next unit is going to be Huo Huo. While Gallagher is giving her a decent run for her money, I still consider Huo Huo to be the best abundance character in the game. In terms of actual sustain, she's without a doubt the best at keeping her team alive and well. Emphasis on the well part. Cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. If you're facing anyone with a mountain of debuffs, Huo Huo can clear all of them with their talents. Were it just that, she wouldn't be too impressive, but Huo Huo is one of only two units who can battery her team. In fact, she can battery the entire team, except her obviously. Supplying 20% energy to her party's respective ultimates means a lot more than it may initially imply. And being a sustained unit, she works with everyone to an extent. Admittedly, when it comes to raw survivability, you're better off with Aventurine or Fushuen considering you can't heal someone if they get one-shotted, but you can't go wrong with a healer who can cleanse you in her sleep and provide more efficiency to your party. Not to mention, her E1 gives bonus speed to everyone in the party at all times basically, and if you do get her E2, that addresses her issue with party members getting O code, at which point, she has no real weakness. The only way I can picture Huo Huo falling off is if another sustain comes out, who can battery. But as of late, most healers coming out focus on other things, so you can rest assured this little twerp won't be going anywhere. If anything, she might get better as we receive more energy demanding units. Supports? For days, you can never have too many supports. The next character will be Sparkle. Sparkle's a hypercarry support to end all hypercarry supports. With her in the party, you can kiss all your skill point worries goodbye. Remember SP efficiency? Gone. SP positive units? Pointless. This bitch turns SP consumption from a bad thing into a good thing. Just by existing, she increases your max cap to 7, and with her ultimate, she instantly restocks 4 SP. She makes playing with super SP hungry characters like Lunai Dan Hung a breeze. Not just that, but like her predecessor Branya, Sparkle can massively increase the damage of her party, particularly the one she's turned advancing with her skill, giving them a metric ton of crit damage, and for every skill point you consume in a set amount of time, the entire party deals bonus damage, which gets further enhanced by her ultimate. While Ranma excels at buffing multiple carries, Sparkle's all about supercharging one. As such, she's a must-have for any hyper-carry focused team like Akron, Sila, Lunai Dan Hung, Tingcha, etc. Having a turn advance is also really beneficial for speedrunning. Though it's not a full 100% link Branyas, you can actually use this to your advantage by going what we call Hyperspeed Sparkle, an exorbitant but extremely rewarding strategy that enables you to wipe out anything with anyone essentially. 
She's definitely a bit harder to invest in and use compared to other supports, but she makes up for it by being either a decent if not optimal choice in any team, whether they do or don't care about SP economy or even if they feature multiple carries. Sparkle is tied with Run May for best support before break teams for a reason. Alright, let's take a break from supports for a moment and discuss another DPS. Next character will be Firefly, the current frontrunner of the new break engine. Firefly is an absolute beast. Just like Akron, with the right team setup, you can turn your brain off and insta-kill everything with Firefly. She can be fielded in virtually every scenario provided there aren't any enemies who can lock their toughness gauge. She can implant fire weakness on enemies at will, meaning you can use her no matter what the cycle is, and even against enemies without a fire weakness, Firefly can still break toughness gauges. She has extremely high DPS courtesy of her fantastic scaling and immediate turn refresh on her ultimate. If you score her second Eidolon, Firefly basically acquires Seal's Resurgence, letting her basically strike twice per turn, assuming you kill or break something. What's interesting is that unlike most damage dealers, Firefly has a modicum of protection within a toolkit as her talent gives her damage reduction and bonus effect res while her ultimate is active. Set talent also instantly regenerates her energy to at least half at the start of battle, and upon reaching max energy she immediately cleanses all debuffs on her, being fully self-sufficient in that regard. Break teams already do a lot of damage by nature of Super Break only taking toughness damage into consideration, but by including Firefly as well, you have someone who can do ridiculous consistent DPS on top of that, making her one of the best teams in the game for pretty much every game mode. Not to mention, she can play with any party member that remotely synergizes with Breaks, so for example in Pure Fiction, you can run her with Himeko for extra wave clear support. The main contingency with Firefly is that it's practically obligatory for you to bring Harmony MC with her, as she's entirely dependent on achieving breaks and making use of super break damage to do just about anything. But that's hardly an inconvenience in light of Harmony MC being the next character I want to talk about. Without question the best free character to ever exist in Honkai style at the moment and probably the best MC I've ever seen in any gacha game. Harmony Trailblazer is more than just a support. They're a state of mind, literally. They're the heartbeat of any break team and really the only reason break teams are allowed to exist. By giving everyone super break damage, they essentially enable everyone to deal meaningful DPS on their party, regardless of if they're a healer, tank, or support. All you care about is toughness damage and break effect, that's it. Fortunately, Harmony MC can supplement that. Their technique affords 30% break effect to all party members, and with their E4, they can share their own break effect with the entire team, giving everyone a solid baseline in terms of damage. Really though, it's the super break aspect that matters. Without this, Gallagher, Firefly, and Boothill would be so much worse than they are. Despite how simple their moveset is, what they do is something no one else can. Harmony Trailblazer single-handedly caused a meta shift when they're introduced. Being a free character is also a major plus, since it means anyone theoretically has access to break teams. More supports. Supports everywhere, when will I stop talking about supports? Never, because we have Robin for our next unit, the third and final member of the Harmony Trinity. Robin's very similar to Ranmei in that she can buff the entire team fairly consistently, but instead of break teams, she's more of a follow-up attack speed run oriented unit. She can offer a mirror to bust the team with almost permanent uptime, but the main draw for Robin is her ability to instantly turn events the entire party, allowing them to act again. If your priority is speedrunning, look no further than her. For all intents and purposes, what Ranmei is to break teams, Robin is to follow-up attackers. So most of the positives I said about Ranmei can be echoed with Robin. They're basically interchangeable. I think in light of weakness breaks being slightly more universally appreciated than follow-up attacks, people like Ranmei a bit more, but overall Robin's supportive utility is every bit equal in strength, and can more than pull her weight supporting all manner of teams. I think as more follow-up attackers get introduced or as more units come out who depend on action count, Robin will get that much better, so definitely look to include her in your pool. Second to last character, or should I say characters plural, will be Kafka and Black Swan. Okay, I'm gonna level with you guys. I have to include these two together because they're too much of a package deal to where I can't in good conscience mention one without the other. I know you might say, but Firefly needs Harmony MC. That is true, but Harmony MC can facilitate all break-oriented teams. So, while Firefly needs a Trailblazer both applicably and romantically, the Trailblazer doesn't necessarily mean Firefly. Square is always a quadrilateral, quadrilateral is not always a square type deal. Anyway, Kafka and Black Swan are the current frontrunners of the Dot Engine, which has sort of been placed on the back burner to make room for follow-up and break, but the strengths of this team cannot be ignored. The shining virtue of them is their usefulness in every game mode, doesn't matter which one. While it may appear counterintuitive to bring a soul burn playstyle like Dot into time-sensitive game modes, Kafka and Black Swan work exceptionally fast and can deal huge damage to either one or multiple enemies without batting an eye. Their non-reliance on crit make them incredibly consistent and straightforward to build, although still expensive due to their high speed requirements. Kafka and Black Swan are paired together very often due to their respective kits complementing one another, so if you have any intentions of going into this field, you should definitely go after both. Right now, we don't have that many enemies who can cleanse themselves, if any at all, which is one area where dot characters can get screwed in. So for the foreseeable future, if you're looking for general damage output, you should have these two on your bucket list. And of course, if Hoyo were to ever introduce more dot characters, that will only make the engine even stronger. 
Last but certainly not least, and this might be a really hot take in light of her being brand new, but rounding out this list will be Yunli. The running theme of this video for damage dealers has been coverage if the character can be used in multiple game modes. That is Yunli's biggest advantage. The way she plays can allow her to basically work for any situation. Her counterattacks both deal blast damage, giving her very good area coverage, and every time she gets attacked, she can strike back against the enemy. That's basically her entire shtick. Draw aggro to herself by any means necessary, and strike enemies a billion times. If you recall back in version 1, Theory Crackers expressed how high Clara's DPS could be if you can engineer the right circumstances for her. Take that same concept and apply it to Yunli, only Yunli does a lot more damage per hit. While Sparog's counter is single target, Yunli's counter is a blast attack, so she can basically nuke entire enemy squads over and over provided she's constantly being attacked. It's a gimmicky and potentially risky way to go about it, but this makes her excellent for all three game modes. This isn't theoretical either, the numbers are definitely there. I know not many people plan to pull for her, but applicably speaking, the fact that Yunli's counterattacks do blast damage help her so much in her performance in Pure Fiction and Apoc Shadow. She might be even better in those game modes, considering you can get attacked a lot more often. A niche character playstyle-wise, but by no means does that hold her back. Alright, that about concludes my top 10 best characters for Honkai Starl at the moment. As a reminder, when Ling Xiao and Fei Xiao come out in 2.5, be sure to check the pinned comment for my thoughts on them. I wish I could talk about them right now because I do know what they do, but I can't. Believe me though, those two are cracked as hell, so keep an eye on them. For now though, if you guys enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Farisfarim, join my Discord server, and check out my other Honkai Starl content if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.